How's it going, ladies and first I'm Bobby Six and welcome back to Meteor World Actor Badge and Dagger. Now I've kind of actually forgotten where exactly we were because uh, since the last episode, um, I the Somnium Files Nirvana ed Initiative has dropped, so I've been recording that. So it's been a few days, but uh, you know me, it'll only take me a minute to get back into it. Let's carry on, shall we? It was a close thing for me, but I'm alive, and the Thirteenth is still here to fight another. Shut down? The moment I open the division door in the morning, I find myself greeted with Clara shouting. Are you serious, Chief? The thing you were foreshadowing the other day actually happened? What? For once, my eyes met Sasuke's. Meanwhile, the whole 13th is pressing in on the Chief. Let's all begin by calming down. Now that Hedio has joined us, I'll explain it from the beginning. The Chief, struggling to fend them off, looks to me. Are your injuries alright? I'm managing, thanks for the concern. Would have appreciated accident comp even more. His big mouth's still working, I figure he's fine. That's right, our, our, our um, apartment blew up and we ended in the hospital. I remember. Can't you even die properly? You're out of line. It sounded like he wanted me to die. Admittedly, it didn't even need saying. But maybe death was too, mu too much to wish on you. For once, Alex act actually repents and corrects himself. Oh, at the end of the day, you know you love me. I wish you'd lost everything from the neck down and been forced to live out your days as a sort of reverse headless horseman. <laughs> hey! Don't worry, I'm just kidding. He snorts. Sounded serious to me. Far from it, far from it. I was so worried for you, I couldn't sleep. He's trying to annoy me. Maybe I should turn around and show him off for. But I'm the bigger man. And trading shots with him is a waste of time. Talking to you anymore would be a waste of my time. You read my mind. What's that? Let's get back on topic. The chief was trying to say something. What was that about some kind of shutdown? They're shutting down the 13th division. The 13th? Not to be outdone, my brain shuts down for a, shuts down for a second. Only for a second, then it clicks. So that's how it is, huh? Rest restructuring the chief was warning us about. Apparently that's been upgraded from rumor to reality. Right after my apartment got blown up. I guy could almost suspect a connection. What's gonna happen to us? We're not f fired. We damn well better not be. I got bar tabs to pay. <laughs> There's no need to worry about that at the moment. You think you could press in on me a little less heatedly? Sure, what's gonna happen to us? I've been trying to get to that. The testing budget is about to be frozen. I'm afraid it'll be made official within a few days. As to what the alternatives will be, they're looking into having you work in other divisions again. Other divisions? Oh, that's a relief. Claris calms down. Huh? Are you actually serious? Unlike Claris, those two haven't lightened up. Makes sense. Claris got assigned to the 13th when she came on, but the rest of us came from elsewhere in the agency. And we're here because we got chased out. If that's seriously the idea, I'm surprised we can't smell the stinky idiot who thought it up from here. Me too. You want to put us back in the playpen? I can't imagine it'll go well. But that would be the decision from above. So they say jump and you set off which bridge? It isn't so much I'm eager to comply, of course. I've worked with you all for quite a long time. I didn't come in expecting you to take this well. The chief closes his eyes and let out, lets out a sigh. Do you think I just sat there and listened to this? Did you argue? As hard as I possibly could. Chief. Lies! I don't believe a word of it. My sentiments precisely. Neither. How can you say those things, everyone? The chief always did his best for you. You know all he wants is to keep his head down till his pension kicks in? No way in hell he said peep to, to the brass. He said he argued as hard as he could. Right, chief? Uh, yes, right up to the limit, I... yes. What's your limit, though? He asked if we think he just sat there and said, <laughs> and said he did something as hard as he could. So what'd you tell him, chief? What limit exactly did you run up against? I'd prefer to leave that to your imagination, so to speak. You call that a straight answer? Did you agree with the decision as hard as you could? We heard that. He actually audibly gulped. He must have nodded his way through the whole death sentence. I think the official order will be coming down before too long. What'll happen to you, Chief? Well, it isn't as if I'm especially useful. I suppose it's possible that I'll be fired. Chief! Have a nice life! Couldn't you muster at least a hint of a tear? Or think of some way to get us out of this? Your mistake was acquiescing in the first place. Well, it's easy to point fingers. 
Well, it's hard on me too. The chief wasn't built for talking back to anyone. At any rate, we'll be putting a stop to our regular tasks today. He sucks as a manager, man. Jesus Christ. Instead, we're supposed to start preparing to move. So that's it. Shut down without a chance to argue. But of course, all of you will still be earning your pay. They aren't even giving us time to be sad, Ruka. First, head you. Why don't you take a look at the transfer paperwork? Alright. I'll go get to work investigating. Excuse me? What's gotten into you? Oh, only the usual, Chief. You know me, Ruka Hiryu, dedicated detective. I just can't wait to go solve crimes. Ah, uh, I see. Well, your enthusiasm is commendable, but today you understand you're doing paperwork. I refuse. What? I'm no use in here. I was made to work crime scenes. I wouldn't want to waste time staring at papers. But these orders come from above my pay grade. This is textbook escapism. You got a feel for the guy. Please, Hiryu. Will you really act out now and snuff out our last hope? Our last hope, even though we're being disbanded? We can't avoid being dissolved in the first place, but the 13th room will remain for now. I think we'll be left with a chance to recover. Do you... really? The reason why this is such a bad idea is that we won't last long in the other divisions. We sidelines aren't that easy to rehabilitate. We're bound to end up drifting back to the sidelines. Stirring up a fuss will only ruin our chances. Can't you understand that, Detective Ruka? For once the Chief has hit the nail on the head, somehow missing his fat thumb on the way. Of course, of course our hopes are as slim as thinny skinny condom, as a thinny skinny condom. Good luck with that, Chief. You think Ruka's gonna listen just cause you're right? I suppose it's unlikely. What are you sighing for, Chief? Nobody keeps his head down like Ruka here you. What? Are you listening? You'll be doing paperwork. I know, and I can't wait to start. After a brief pause, the Chief nods his head. I appreciate your positivity. Is that what it is? More likely a portent of disaster in my view. Oh, the suspicion. What's wrong with you? Ikuta offered me some powerful encouragement too. I'm remembering how inspired I felt. I get it, you already did something to piss off the brass. And then you remembered that evils exist. You're a detective, cut the speculation. Here comes a time in a cop's life when he's gotta do, pa got do paperwork. Tamako's crossed that bridge before too, right? Uh, she sighs without a hint of sympathy, but it's not like I've got time to waste commiserating anyway. So Chief, what exactly do you want me doing? Uh, let's see, could you start with this? The Chief produces an inch thick slab of documents, which he holds up for me to take. Oh, is this all? I thought I'd be measuring the thickness in feet. Ah, uh, no. Could you bring those to the records room? They'll be important to process this upcoming restructuring. You're telling me there's even more? I'm afraid those will barely scratch the surface. You can do it, Ruka. Right. I pull something out of my pocket. What are you doing with your lighter? Please keep your smoking in the smoking room. Somehow, as if moved by my hand, the lighter seems to approach the slab of paper I'm holding. Just one little flickin'. Hey, no burning the paperwork. Craps, get off me, this is harassment. Buzz is quick to pin my lighter hand behind my back. That sure didn't last long. Outside with Claris in tow, I spot Ikuta. He's climbing into a car, trying to leave. Hey Ikuta. That comes out as a half shout, but it doesn't win me so much as a glance. Wait up, man. I catch the door right before it closes. What do you want? I'm busy, unlike you. Must be rough on the first, chasing all the best cases. It's the 13th I'm here about. I assume your superior has you fully informed? Are they serious with us? Trying to mix us back in with the other divisions? Are they serious? What an odd thing to ask. The upper echelons have passed down a decision. You can rest assured that they're serious. Good to know. But the orders aren't official yet, right? So they can still scrap the idea if they wanted to. You're that against moving divisions? You think I'm going to get along with them? And I don't trust you not to screw me over. How prescient. You're destined for the traffic division. You're joking. Traffic? Luca? Good, um, luck? Please drive. He's still gonna figure me in the front seat. Hey, hold up! That last part was a joke, right? As Ikuta's car pulls away, the life seeps out of me. They're putting me in traffic? Me? Their best officer? I like it. It has tragic appeal. I'm not into despair porn. Maybe not yet. <laughs> anyway, why not try it? You might even like it. The worst part is I think she might be serious. It might be the perfect job for... <laughs> Ouch! 
Great, now you're some kind of kidder. Shoot, I just had to go and giggle. The traffic division of all places. Helping little old ladies across dangerous streets is about the most action they ever see. I mean, presumably. It's not like I'd know. What a thrill ride. This blows. Maybe we'll get lucky and tomorrow won't happen. That's about all I got left to hope for. The apocalypse tonight. Yeah. At midnight. Well, you never know. Why do they make these floors so hard? Waking from a sh from shallow sleep, I scan the room. It's a little after four in the morning. With my apartment lost to the Smithereens Hall of Fame, I'm short on softer sleeping surfaces. So the exhaustion I feel, the exhaustion I fell asleep to, is right where I left it. Like anybody, buddy could get a good rest on a bed like this. I stand corrected. She looks downright peaceful. One of the perks of being bug-sized. A pillow and a soft underlayer, big enough for her to easy to rustle up most anyway. Damn. I can't believe they're dismantling the 13th. Whether it'll stick, we'll have to see. Because if we fit in elsewhere, it wouldn't have existed. It's clear as day how this is going to turn out, but day's not so clear until the 7th skies. The brass seems to really want to make this stick. If they stick to their guns here, we might really be done for. In that case, our motley crew is not, going, not long for the force. As for me, it's not like I'm that attached to the organization, or to the motley crew in question. Traffic, huh? Last place I want to go. My sigh rises into the air like smoke. What I have to do won't change wherever I am, but I don't like the ring of Hiryu, Ruka Hiryu traffic cop. Despair porn it is. Unless I can find a way to stop tomorrow from coming. And still, I can't stop wishing I could. Guess I'll grab a little more shadow. I got no option but to sleep and forget it all. <sighs> Phew. Now it's a little after 5am. I'm burning down my third smoke of the morning. Most creatures, great and small, are wisely asleep, but in the MPA's illustrious offices, there's still activity. Not much, and not by many, but there are officers and detectives on duty. Crime never sleeps after all. I trade a few words with the other detectives dropping in for a smoke as I wait for morning. How long since the last time I was homeless? Half thinking thoughts like that, I killed time until morning. At least we don't have to pay rent. There's a bonus. Good mor- Yeah, it stinks. Huh? Oh, morning. Yep. I suppose you did sleep here last night, didn't you? I guess it's fine at this point. Why's that? Oh, because the 13th won't be here much longer anyway. It doesn't matter what happens to this room now. Cool as a cucumber, huh? Aren't we all? Maybe you got a point. But, Tamako takes a sniff. This smell is, um, what, are you saying I stink? I never dream of jumping to conclusions, but the possibility seems difficult to describe as low. I want to take a whiff and make sure. I raise an arm to give her a good angle of my armpit. I think I'd rather die. Try it. I'll give your corpse nostrils a healthy sniff. That's my corpse's problem. Good luck, corpse. The rest of the 13th trickles in. Good morning. Morning. I give Claris my warmest welcome. Strangely, she seems to flinch. What's wrong, Ruka? What do you mean? No, um, it's only... You're being a little weird. Your smile is scaring me. What a treat, huh? You get to bask in my coolness before work even starts. Um... Actually, I've got something I want to ask you. I don't like where this is going. Wow, she's on guard, and it's only getting tighter. Anyway, I wouldn't want to keep you from work. Let me borrow you for a bit later. I got a strong feeling that I'd better refuse. Don't be like that, come on. Let's talk over breakfast. I just remembered, I got plans today. I just remembered too. Claris is a bad lawyer. Right, Chief? You know. The thing? What? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I might know what you mean. So convincing. She thinks she's getting away from me that easy? Once the morning bustle settles down, I grab Claris by the scuff of her neck. Come on. Help me. Be strong, Detective Claris. Be strong. We're here for food. Bring us the works. Can you narrow down your order a little? Rice. Would you like some curry with that? Sure. 
What if it's got calories? What if you're out in a jiffy? What have you been doing for food lately, anyway? Since you lost your apartment, not a hell lot of a lot. Not a hell of a lot. I'm saying the 13th for now. So yeah, food's a problem. They blew up my damn booze and everything. I should build the jerks for it. That'll teach him. I consider. I meet Clarissa's eyes. She breaks the contact without missing a beat. Don't look at me. I'm not lending you money, and I'm not your soup kitchen. Some partner you are. That's not what partners are for. I guess I've only got one option left. Armed robbery? Petty theft? Leaning on Mal. You. What? It's not even a crime. It's... I think it's worse. How do you figure? Mel would definitely help you, wouldn't she? She's nice, yeah. Unlike some partners I could mention. I'm a sympathetic guy, he's just down on his luck. It's not right to exploit her sympathy like that. Clarice gives me a cold stare. I don't care what you think of me. Can't afford to. I already lost my home, I got nothing more to lose. What's this about losing your home? Maruka's apartment got blown up the other day. What? That explosion was at your place? I'm sorry to hear that. You want to put me up at your place for a while? I'll help you out as a pay as payback. I'm good. Would it kill you to think it over first? I'm not going to waste time thinking about things that aren't happening. Good answer, Ryoko. Invite Ruka in and who knows what he might do. Exactly. What do I ever do to the fairer sex? Well, I keep my mouth shut. Except a shovel and curry. When my stomach is full, I go see Mel. Hey, Mel. Hi, Ruka. You here for lunch? She looks up at me with puppy dog eyes and a smile. There's no way in hell I'm telling that face I'm full. Damn it, there goes my heart of gold again. I can't disappoint that jackpot of cuteness. He just had curry. A huge helping of it too. You're dead, rookie. That's a little drastic. Oh, you've eaten. I thought you might stay a while. But all I did was tell the truth. There's a time and a place for everything. Then you should have eaten in the cafeteria in the first place. I look for a snappy answer and come up empty. Well, uh, yeah. Next time. I can still hang out for a while at least. There's something I want to tell you. Is now alright? Would it be okay to, for me to clean up while we talk? Go ahead. She started anyway, not waiting for an answer. I'm going to be crashing at the 13th for a while. You'll be staying in the 13th division? She cocks her head, not understanding. I'm basically going to be living there, yeah. Because he lost his apartment. Huh? What happened? I can help you if you're short on rent. For real? How much you got? Hey, cut that out! Are you fishing to see how much you can borrow? I'm the type to take what I can get where I can get it. You're the type who's a terrible person. It's not the money, Mel. His apartment went and exploded. Huh? Did you leave the pan on the burner? For Mel, nothing nastier than a stove accident comes to mind. If only it had been something so charmingly domestic. Something along those lines. No point making her worry, so I fudge the truth. Finally, even Clara, sharp as a frying pan, picks up on it and lets the matters lie. So I'm kind of short on room and board, and also clothes. I got a place to stay covered with the 13th, but I'm still missing the other two. In the explosion, I lost the whole fortune I was hiding in my vault. You never had a vault, let alone a fortune. I think you had a piggy bank. It was empty. And there was a big hole in the bottom. You bought it to try and save, but you didn't have the willpower, so you smashed it, didn't you? Shut it. It was like that when I got it. Clarice gets an extra large serving of the stinko. Anyway, that's the story. I'm broke. I could use a hand for a while. I see, so that's why you came by. I understand. I'll ask on your behalf. Really? Of course. After all, you're in trouble, Luca. See, Clarice, that's what an actual good person looks like. Notice how you won't like this at all. Ugh, she's too bright. I can't look straight at her. Clarice covers her eyes with a hand. What would you like in terms of meals? I can pass on breakfast. Give me lunch and dinner and I won't complain. I got it. I'll arrange that for you. You're an angel, Mel. She sets up for the back with a blinding smile. I feel like you're taking advantage of her good nature. Her good nature has got its advantages. Night time. It's empty in the 13th. I'm making a phone call. It's to a man. My second attempt, a few minutes after the first failed. Hey, were you sleeping? It's after 2 in the morning. I think most people would be. That's Strikos is not answer. Busy people are still working hard, especially detectives on a low monthly wage. But he doesn't sound groggy to me. I'm a busy man, like you. I'm still up and still plugging away. Are you now? So, what might you want at this hour? Are you up to date on NPA gossip? 
That's quite a sudden question. Police information is, of course, confidential to the police. You can't expect an ordinary citizen like me to be up to date. Ordinary? Keep telling yourself that. You know everything you can get away with. He doesn't care if the info is official or confidential. He files away every scrap he can assemble. You're overestimating me. He won't admit a thing. It's about the 13th. Know what I mean now? He's sharp, almost certainly he does. But only almost. Luca, my dear. I really don't know anything this time. That or he's playing dumb. Lies. He chuckles wryly, then tries to convince me. Once upon a time, I did make an effort to accumulate data without much interest in its moral integrity. Back then, I vacuumed up all the information I could. I know. Then do you also know the reason why? Why he was all in on info? I never thought about it before. No clue. Why well, start thinking about it now when you could just tell me? Because I was convinced that information was power. I'm a feeble human, unlike you, Ruka. Keepers and members of other races could kill me any time if, if it struck their fancy. So I needed information to stay one step ahead. Of course, I still believe the same. That's a significant reason why I'm still alive. I hear another self-deprecating chuckle. But I'm not, omnis not omniscient anymore. There's only ever more information in this world, but obtaining it has grown twice. Three times as difficult. So you gave up on police intel? More dangerous data was a higher priority. NPA's internals fell out of my reach. How much of this is true? It could go either way. It's safer to assume he's lying, but... Lately, Ikuta has been keeping an eye on me as well. Ikuta has? He's been climbing the ladder so quick, you know? And he's quite familiar with how I operate. So you're saying you don't know anything? That's what I'm saying! Did something happen at the 13th? No, nothing. If he can't help, then I'm wasting my time. I'm hanging up. I hope one day you'll gain some appreciation for small talk. You're busy sucking up data, aren't you? No time to waste chatting then. Get back to work. I suppose you have a point. I cut the connection without saying goodbye. So Strikos doesn't know they're dismantling the 13th. Or if he knows, he's not telling for free. I mean, you already know, so... Why would he charge you for that? On my way back from my morning dump, I find Tamako and Clara standing looking at something. What's he doing? Oh, Ruka! It seems the day has already hit us. What day? They're staring at a monitor. Displayed there are a few short sentences. As the 13th Division has been officially disbanded, report to your reassignments promptly. Take only the minimum in personal items. Agency property is not to be brought along. The heck? You hadn't seen this yet? I was busy this morning. Busy? At love and peace. Eating breakfast, so busy. Breakfast gives you the energy for the day. You can't skimp on breakfast. I wasn't even out for a whole hour. From that time, this was slapped together and sent out. Where'd they put me again? Oh right, the second. You can't run from reality. You got traffic, Luca. Come to think of it, Aren't 90% of our traffic officers women? Excluding some of the desk workers, yeah. Lucky you, you get your own harem. Can I pinch your cheeky little imp? Just this once, full force. Try it and I'll pinch your cheek full force, how does that sound? Vaz comes up behind us, looking like he just rolled out of bed. No thanks, you can probably pinch my whole face off. I did that one time to this punk who wasn't answering questions. How did it turn out? Worse than I figured. Kinda wound up ripping a hole in his cheek. Blood everywhere, and you can see the guy's teeth. Buzz looks <laughs> lost in reminiscence. Good thing his eyes are closed, so you can't see the crazy. Eek. That's probably a war crime. Don't tell it like it's a fun story. <laughs> Chalk another one up to Seggots and Nuts. Go ahead. Tamako proffers a cheek to tweak. You want to see me get my face pulled off here? Eh? I'd be lying if I told you I wouldn't enjoy it. Hey now. This might be the last time we talk like this, after all. The day really came, didn't it? Looks that way. I appreciate the time we spent together, Luca. We did have some good times together, didn't we? Aside from the 70 or 80% bad times. But I'm still grateful. A little bit. You look like you're 20 or 30 you 20 or 30 percent mean it. Doesn't feel much like a goodbye. Anyway, take care of yourself. It's not like this is the last you'll see of me. We're still gonna be working in the same building. That's true. I'm sure we'll run into each other, with you in the traffic division. You just had to remind me. We drop the usual 13th banter of banter and drift back to our desks. Good morning, everyone. It happened, didn't it, Chief? As he walks in, Tamako asks, sounding lo lonely. That's the sum of it, yeah. Bye-bye, 13th. 
until we meet again. We won't let this be the end, Ruka. Ending up in another division would be better for you, though. In a lot of ways. But if I'm honest, I agree with you. Life in the other divisions is looking damn oppressive. Why am I not going back to the first? The newest recruit still the slowest to catch on. Where's he going then? Out in the hallway I find Nagato. Do you see the orders? Yes, I was the first one here. She only just got here, yeah. Right after you joined the 13th tour. Huh? That sucks. You're going back to where you were, right? I'm not happy about it. I wasn't here long, but I preferred the 13th. Then you're an outlier. She must have had a bad at forensics, so I like it better here. But I can't blame you. It's not like I want to go anywhere near traffic. Are you not quitting the force? Huh? I found myself considering that option. I can see where you're coming from. If you and me quit, it's not like anyone would miss us. So I'm sticking it out. Because you want people to be sad when you go? Nah. I just hate to see him smile. Whew. He finally quit. I'm not giving them the satisfaction. I see. They'd be laughing at you too. There she goes. Good riddance. I don't know her background, but that's generally how it goes when everyone hates you. At least make him squirm first. I'll consider it. Dripping, dripping her head, Nagade moves off towards the seventh. I move over to the empty smoking room and start puffing. I don't want to go. But I follow orders and show my face at traffic. A different smell from the 13th assails my nose. You need a critical mass of women to get a smell like this. Oof, it stinks! No, you're the one who stinks. <laughs> a disgruntled voice greets me from the side. You had a, a smoke on the way here, didn't you? So what if I did? I did it the regulation way. You know, when you bring up the rules, it's not so convincing to anybody who knows how you usually treat them. Anyway, I didn't do anything to get hassled over. Not according to the rule book, anyway. But here's a fact for you. Did you know that the traffic division is 100% smoker free? What? That means nobody in here smokes cigarettes at all. It's not 100% anymore, baby, because we're here. <laughs> and? Why are you so willful? Kabachi, exasperated, still bulls ahead. If you smoke, that's going to break our perfect 100% record. A record like that is meaningless if you force it. Don't worry, I'll show you the error of your ways. Perfection is so fragile, it can't survive a single blemish. That's not the point. She pokes a finger into my clothes. Be careful bringing that tobacco smell in here, okay? It's gonna make her whole division hate you. Hate me? I look around the room. A few faces are turning to look at me, but most of them are pretending not to notice the commotion. You see? See what? They're wary of you because you're a smoker. No, they're not. They're wary of me because the 13th biggest problem child just got dumped in their laps. Why'd it have to be us, they're thinking? This is the worst. Or just see through it. Fine. My smokes have got nothing to do with it. You're like an expert on being hated. I get experience most everywhere I go. Honestly. You can at least try to make people like you. The officers here might like you more if you quit smoking. Love that cheap? I don't need. I heave a sigh. But I do to deserve traffic. Poor thing. Um, so we're gonna get in a patrol car now. Are you listening, newbie? Hey, Ruka, stop dreaming of greener divisions. Shut it. I'm busy asking myself what the 13th ace is doing in the traffic. He's still on that? Wake up and face reality. I'm facing it. I'm staring right at it and wondering why the hell the 13th ace detective got... You're not even the 13th ace. That's Sasuke. Now you're just being stupid. If I'm not, then who do you think is? Sasuke. Sounds like she's thought about it. I mean, duh. Sure, if you only look at the arrest numbers. That's how you tell who's the ace. Easy, right? No, it's not. It's about being the uniting force, force in the division. Does Sasuke have the leadership skills to hold the 13th together? He does kind of work alone, doesn't he? See my point? You're abysmal in that department, though. Leadership, I mean. Am I? Being the 13th ace isn't, isn't good bragging rights anyway. Shut it. And leave me alone. Yeah, but I kind of can't. My senior officers have put me in charge of your butt. You're in charge of me? Well, nobody else wanted to be. Boy, I sure pulled the short straw. That's the longest straw there is. You get to work with me. Yay, I'm so happy. She whips out a dazzling smile. Come on, get in here. I'm forced into the police car by a wall of good cheer. If I gotta drive, you don't get to just sit back and enjoy the ride with us. You're the newbie here, you get that? This sucks. What really sucks is our poor traffic division having to deal with you. Ignoring her weak burns, I fire up the engine.
I mean, I'd want to drive, wouldn't you? I mean, not driving would be boring. Alright, we're going to wrap this one up because we're out of time for today. But I guess in the next episode, we get to learn how to do traffic. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.